Welcome to another Rebel University video tutorial. This video will provide a high-level overview of the point of sale. More details on some of the functions will be provided in additional tutorials linked below. As with all of our videos, you can jump ahead to any topic that is most important to you. All of our videos have a table of contents listed below, along with other videos and support articles to help you along the way. So let's take a look at the point of sale. First, let's take a look at a few things that appear on the POS home screen or login screen before we log in. At the top left, the Revel logo appears. If we double click the logo, the POS information will display, including things like your app version, some of your establishment info, and more. If you ever need to contact support, they'll most likely need some of this information. You can also click on the Diagnostics option for even more assistance. If I click OK here, I'll return back to the home screen. Next, the Refresh button appears at the top right. This is important to ensure that any changes you've made on the Management Console take effect here on the point of sale. A good practice is to refresh at least once a day or any time you know you've made changes on the back end. At the bottom left, you'll see a few different notifications for things related to payments and orders. You may see even more notifications here if you use online ordering or some of our other add-ons. And finally, the pen pad, this is where you and your employees can enter your pen that was designated when employees were created. That pin can be used to clock in and out, as well as log in to create orders. First enter the pin and then choose the option. I'll choose the clock in option first. Notice I'm prompted to indicate which role I'm clocking in for, which will help determine payroll. Once I'm confirmed as clocked in, now I can log into the system. I'll enter the pin and this time choose login. When we first log in, we are on the dashboard of the point of sale. However, you can jump to one of the other tabs at the bottom of the screen by choosing Manage Customers, Inventory, or Settings. More on each of those in other videos. For now, we'll focus on the options that appear on the dashboard. Please note the view you see on your point of sale may differ slightly from the one that you see in this tutorial. Because Revel's point of sale is so customizable and you have the ability to turn items on and off, as well as subscribe to additional add-on features, the dashboard view may vary for all users. In addition, some features are tied to employee roles and permissions. So while we see everything here and your employees may see buttons once they log in, as you'll see, some options are secured with a manager's pin. Take for instance the first section for reports. At the top left, we'll see the most recently viewed report. In this case, it's the product mix report. You can view a few other reports by clicking on the ellipses icon. Here's where additional security comes in. Depending on some of your security and employee permission settings, you may be prompted to re-enter your PIN here. If you have multiple establishments, you can switch to a different establishment and choose a different report to view. And depending on the report, you may see different filters appear here as well. Once you select a report, it displays in the upper left section of the dashboard. Another feature that is primarily available to managers and owners, the time management function, allows you to see who is clocked in and when. Additionally, if employees need clocked out, you can do that from here as well. You can even adjust your employees' time if they forgot to clock in and you need to update it. Next, we have the tills function, which allows you to set the starting and ending tills for your cash drawers. Tills can be set either by entering a sum total of your starting cash amount, or you can enter the quantities of each bill type. Once your till is set, you can select the set option at the top right. This will confirm that your till is ready to go. When setting up tills, you also can assign the till to a particular employee. So if only one employee will be responsible for the till, you can select them from the list. 
Save when finished and you'll see that that till has been set with the appropriate drawer name. The last option on the left side of the screen is the end of day process. The end of day process is set up initially in the management console under the settings tab. Then at the end of the day, you can run the end of day process to close out the items that you set up in the management console. We have a separate tutorial on the end of day process, so be sure to check that out with the link below. The time clock allows users to clock in and out from the dashboard. This works just like the clock in and clock out function on the home screen, but users can access it while logged in. For QSR and retail clients, most new orders will be started using the New Order tab. Table service clients will mostly use the Tables option for new orders. For more info on creating orders, be sure to review our Transactions and Order tutorial linked below. The Reports option allows you to view more information on financial reports. From here, you can also email a copy of the report to yourself or a colleague, or print a copy of the receipt. Additionally, many reports have the ability to filter by user, so you can view aggregate data for all employees or just individual employees. The Orders tab allows you to view all orders, whether in progress or closed. For voids, returns, and exchanges, you can use this button. The return function allows you to return merchandise back to your inventory. You'll need an order ID or barcode to access the initial order. Or, if activated, you can use the No Receipt option to do a receiptless return. For more information on receiptless returns, check out our article linked below. Once you enter the order ID, the order will display. Select the item on the order you want to void or return. Another menu appears. Choose the Remove Item option at the bottom. A reason is required, so be sure to enter something in the text box. You'll see the product details and you can choose if the item should be returned to inventory or not. Click OK when finished. The item will be removed from the order. If the item has not been paid for, then a simple void has successfully been completed. If the order has already been paid for, you'll be prompted how you want to process a refund. If cash was paid, your cash drawer will open. If paid via credit card, the card will automatically be refunded. For an exchange to occur on the initial order after the original item is voided, Instead of choosing to refund the balance, choose No Thanks. The available negative balance will display at the bottom of the order. You can add additional items to the order. Then, if there is a difference in price, the customer will need to pay the difference if it's greater than the balance, or if the item costs less than the balance, the merchant can refund any remaining balance. Delivery management is the next option that you see on my screen. This is an add-on feature available for customers who need to use their own fleet of delivery drivers. We have a separate tutorial on delivery management, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. If your system is set up as a table service restaurant, the Tables tab is where you can access your table layout. From the table layout, you can create new orders, update orders, close out orders, and more. This is covered in more detail in our transactions and orders tutorial. The product setup option allows users to manage product lists from the point of sale. This includes adding and editing categories, subcategories, and products. This is covered in great detail in our products tutorial. Other buttons that you may or may not see, depending on your subscriptions, include gift cards, reward cards, store credit, online ordering, and more. If you have additional questions about items not covered in this tutorial, be sure to review our help site for more information. We hope you found this point of sale overview helpful and were able to follow along. Remember, for more information on the end of day process and transactions and orders, be sure to check out those videos next, and for other questions, contact support.
Thank you for watching another Revel University video tutorial.